What's up everybody, I'm Seth Fowler and today I'm reviewing the upcoming Adidas Yeezy Boost 700 Analog. The 700 Analog looks just like two other pairs of Yeezys that have released in the last maybe four months. And I'm not talking about all Yeezys, I'm excluding 500s and 350s. I'm talking purely about 700s. We've seen two 700s already released that look just like this pair. There were the Static V2s and the Salt V1s that look almost identical to this shoe. And the reason I think people gave those shoes a pass is because even though the colorways were very similar, they were technically different silhouettes. The analog, however, is the same silhouette as the Salts, and it looks very, very similar. Honestly, the fact that Adidas and Kanye are releasing more Yeezys and making the shoe much more widely available I think is a great thing. But when there's a Yeezy release almost every weekend, why would you make the colorways so similar? Why wouldn't you try something different? Like isn't Kanye's whole thing trying new things? I don't get it. I really don't. There are smarter people than me at Adidas Corporate who are making these decisions so I'm sure there's a reason. I just don't know what that reason could be. If you are trying to grab a pair of the 700 analogs because maybe it's your first pair of 700s or I don't know, you just wanna collect them all, I'm not sure, they drop this Saturday, April 27th for $300 US. But with that out of the way, let's jump right into the sneaker itself. As with every other 700 V1, you've got this nice piece of premium feeling gray suede around the toe of the shoe. Just beneath that, you've got this light cream or what Adidas is calling analog colored mesh, which I think is a dumb name. I don't know why they went with that. And then running along the sides of the toe, you've got some more suede panels in sort of a lighter gray. And then in the center of the midfoot, you've got more of that mesh covering up the Adidas three stripes, which come in 3M. So the only way to actually see them is to take a flash picture of the shoe. And that actually brings up one of my favorite parts about the 700 model, and that's the minimal branding. The only place you actually have Yeezy branding anywhere on the shoe is on the insole and on the inside of the midfoot. Continuing up on the sneaker, you've got this light cream leather panel that actually houses the lace eyelets. Weaving through those eyelets, you've got these white or I guess light cream laces. Beneath the laces, you've got this brandless light gray mesh tongue. And then moving inside the sneaker, you've got this light gray, pretty well padded sock liner. Rounding off the inside of the shoe, you've got this kind of out of place light baby blue insole. I'm not sure exactly why they made it baby blue. There isn't baby blue anywhere else on the shoe that I can find, but it's there. And of course, you've got the Ortholite, Yeezy, and Adidas branding printed on the insole in white. As for fit, the 700 analog does seem to fit like every other 700 V1. A lot of people suggest going up half a size because they say it fits a little bit small. And I would say if you have wider feet, that's probably not a bad way to go. But if you're like me and you have more narrow feet, you should be fine going true to size. But with Yeezy 700s becoming more widely available, it shouldn't be too hard to try and find a pair to try on first before you buy it to make sure you're grabbing the right size for you. Continuing back on the shoe, you've got another suede panel, this time in sort of a light cream with two punch outs to 3M accents. Those punch outs always sort of reminded me of like bug eyes or like a pig nose or something. I don't love them. Around the top of the ankle, you've got this very widely knit light cream mesh. And then moving around to the heel of the shoe, you've got another suede panel in light gray with punch outs through to 3M accents. And then moving down on the sneaker, you've got your standard Yeezy Boost 700 midsole, which is shared on both the V1 and V2 silhouettes. This sculpted midsole encases an almost full length boost cushion, which makes the ride of this sneaker very comfortable. This time around, the analog colorway comes with a light cream midsole with a very subtle contrast provided by these white details. As with most other 700s, these two ovals around the heel of the midsole are actually 3M. And then finally, moving to the bottom of the shoe, you've got this black rubber outsole with punch outs through to the boost. Overall, the 700 analog, in my opinion, is just more of the same. Yes, it's a great silhouette. I love the way this shoe looks. I love how comfortable it is. But if you already own pairs of 700s, you really don't need to spend the $300 to grab this pair. But like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, if you don't have any other pairs of 700s and you want a pair, this isn't a bad way to go and it shouldn't be too hard to get. For me though, this is definitely not a pair of shoes that I plan to keep. In fact, I bought it off GOAT purely for this review. I may actually leave a link in the description below to my web store where you can grab this exact pair for retail. But that pretty much wraps up the review for today. Now I would love to know your thoughts on the Yeezy Boost 700 analog and whether you're planning to grab a pair for yourself. So make sure to leave those comments in the comment section down below. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Please make sure to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe down below if you haven't yet, and I'll see you all in the next one.